name is Kai Ping Chen. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Wisconsin Madison. I'm very excited to share my paper, How Deliberative Designs Empower Citizens' Voices, a case study of Ghana's deliberative poll on agriculture and the environment. This paper will be especially interesting to you if you are scholars or practitioners working about how to effectively engage public talking about complex policy issues. It will give you a lot of takeaway about what could be the effective design to engage the public, especially engage those underserved population. This paper will also be interesting to you if you are working on about the methodologies regarding how we can measure the quality of people's deliberation and how we can look into the expertise used in these deliberative events. So that, let me get down to the paper. So empowering ordinary citizens with the capacity to deliberate is a core issue in science communication. Despite growing deliberative practices in developed nations, it is significantly less understood how public deliberation can happen among population who live with limited education resources and poor urban infrastructure in developing countries. So my paper fills this gap by examining this pressing question of how we can aid ordinary citizens with limited education and poor living conditions in the global south to engage in thoughtful discussion on complex issues. So to do this, I examined a deliberative poll that was conducted in Tamale, Ghana in 2015 on agriculture, environment, and public health challenges. The deliberative poll lasted for two days. So deliberative poll is an effective deliberative democracy design invented by James Fishkin and Stanford University to examine what the public opinion would be when people were exposed to a balanced, diverse, and equal information environment. So these effective designs include, but are not limited to, a representative sample of participants, moderated, small group discussion, and information material that provide to participants to tell them the pros and cons of each proposal. So effective designs also are tailored to participants who lack education by replacing the written information material with video, which is the Tamale deliberative poll case. Pre and post surveys are used to measure public opinion change from these deliberative polls. So in the Tamale deliberative poll, Participants need to figure out many wicked and urgent problems facing their daily lives. For instance, this is a picture that shows a challenge people in Tamale face every day. They need to use wastewater for farming to ensure food security. As we can see that the red dots and the, the green dots are together, which means the toilet sites are built on the site of agricultural farming. So here is one trade-off people need to solve. They need to use wastewater for farming to ensure food security. However, this use of wastewater can also increase public health risks such as cholera. Yet without using wastewater for farming, they will suffer food shortage. So this is one example of the many complex policy problems people in the Tamale deliberative poll deliberated and need to figure out. So a highlight I would like to draw your attention to, to my paper, is the variety of data types and methods I used to provide a nuanced look into what kind of expertise was included in the information material provided to participants and how participants deliberated about these complex issues, which include many trade-offs. To look into the expertise used in the deliberative poll, I analyzed the speakers and the core messages they made in the stimulus video, which was shown to participants before deliberation. 
So from analyzing the stimulus video, I found that these speakers represented people possessing various types of knowledge, policymakers, scholars, and lay citizens that are differently affected by these issues. Because of this diverse composition, they are core messengers provided a variety of expertise. More technical related knowledge from policymakers and scholars, as well as local knowledge from lay citizens, such as their cultural values, habits, and living experiences. So regarding how these populations deliberated about these complex issues, in my paper, I used the novel measurements as well as a combination of manual content analysis and machine learning methods to analyze two days of deliberation transcripts. So to measure people's quality of deliberation, I drew from their discourse quality index DQI, but also proposed in my paper an indicator to examine how people justify their opinions when they respond to their peers' opinions. And I also considered a variety of communicative reasoning formats, including citing facts, storytelling. I found that almost 90% of the speech acts participants made during the deliberation utilized the justification. And they even utilized the sophisticated reasoning, such as racing assumptions and conditions for a proposal to work. So moreover, deliberation outcomes from the Tamali deliberative poll was also taken into policy considerations by the Tamali Municipal Assembly. So my paper showed that with effective designs, underserved population can reason about complex policy issues, and their voices can matter in policy making. So what I aim to do in this paper is to contribute to our understanding about how we can effectively foster pub public deliberation among populations in the global south, and how researchers can integrate different types of data and the methods to measure the nuance of expertise and the public reasoning on science. And I hope you enjoy reading this paper and welcome to email me for comments and suggestions. Thank you.